Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather coming at you with another video. Today is Tuesday, January 28th, and then today's update, we're going to be talking about a major pattern change that's going to be starting to impact the United States next week. So before I do get started, if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload about five videos a week to keep you updated. All right, so let's get started. So here's an overall uh, temperature anomalies for January. And um, as you already know, <laughs> we've been well above normal. Uh, this is a map from basically January 1st through the 27th. We've had, we've had some cold blasts. We had that cold blast starting around uh, the 18th, 20th of the month. It lasted about four or five days and then it retreated. Uh, but overall, we've been well above normal for the central uh, two thirds of the United States and a tad bit of below normal uh, in the northwestern part of the United States. So we had been able to get some snow in this this period, but but like I said, overall we had that surprise this morning, 15 inches of snow in, in Kansas. That was incredible. Uh, but overall, it's been a fairly mild uh, January. So, but we're starting to see signs that the pattern is starting to change, not just temporary, but hopefully for the long haul. So let's kind of delve into it. So here's the overall uh, temperatures uh, right now. So basically everything's been kind of bottled up in Canada. Um, we saw, you know, well below normal temperatures in November. We had that blocking. We had well above average temperatures in Alaska. And then about the second week in December, everything started to change. Um, the ridge retreated. We started getting more of a zonal flow. Uh, we went ab above average and we've been basically staying above average since about the second week of December. And here it is all the way at the end of January. So we've been trying to get it something to, to alter to, to change this pattern. And I think we might actually found it. So let's kind of delve into it. So what's been happening is here's an example of the polar vortex. And it's essentially a donut, you know, and we get this, we get these west east flows, this jet stream just so fast, it kicks these systems out so fast. And it's a zonal flow. There's no, there's no dip. We saw that dip in the jet stream, but it was very subtle. And that's the thing that allowed it uh, to snow in Texas uh, this morning and in Kansas and the Eastern uh, Panhandle. But again, it's a one, two day event and it retreats back up. So uh, we could get that system in the Northeast this weekend, but again, it's fast. It's, it's a fast moving system because we've got this donut shaped pattern, but about the fourth time frame, so about another week from now, we start to see that polar vortex try to kind of elongate. And that's the first early signs we, we have a, what they call a displacement. So that's how you kind of start. It starts to send out uh, cold surges uh, down, in, down into the United States. So if we take it out another frame, here's the latest uh, guidance on the six. So not only does it displace, but it could possibly split. So it's kind of a a step down process, a displacement is just a, a minor cold surges in the United States. If we get a split, then that split, when it comes back, it'll send another cold surge. Now, if we actually take it a step further, uh, we could get what's called a sudden stratospheric warming event. Now, it's not showing signs now, but if, if you recall, it's actually about this time last year that we had that uh, southern stratospheric warming event. It showed signs on January 2nd and it takes about 20 to 25 days to propagate down to the surface. But the end result was some extreme cold uh, in the state of Illinois, the record, all time record, 38 below zero. So uh, that's what can happen in a, a stratospheric uh, warming event. But I'm not seeing that now. But if it does happen, we're kind of running out of time because uh, even at the end of like February 12th, if it does happen, there's still a 20, you know, 20 to 25 day lag to it. And that'll push us. Uh, end of March. But right now, we definitely have signs of a displacement and early signs of a polar vortex split. So if we look at the teleconnections, and you can kind of see it's coming. So this week, you can see the uh, I, I printed out the uh, the EPO, the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, and the PNA, the Pacific North Atlantic Oscillation. And both of these guidance has been well positive uh, in January. And that's why we've been well above normal for the eastern part of the United States. But you can see right around the second, and that's why that system in the northeast that I'm going to find two tomorrow is kind of at a crucial point because this literally starts to dip 
colder air starts to penetrate in, but is it too fast? How much cold air is going to be left? You know, so I'll just have to uh, fine tune that uh, in tomorrow's video, but it definitely goes negative or some neutral. And these are all the models by around the fourth or fifth. And I showed you that's the beginning of the displacement, but it not only does it go neutral, but uh, some of them actually go negative. So this should continue at least pour in subtle pulses of colder air in the United States and not just last, you know, three or four days like we've been seeing. And then the, uh, the PNA, so um, it's been, you know, below normal in the Western part of the United States. And this will start to feed into the central, it goes negative, and then kind of give everybody some cold air, you know, starting the second week, first and second week in February. If we take, it some, look, take a look at some of the anomalies, um, here's the latest uh, European, and it kind of shows about that, say this time next week, we've got that first cold surge in, into the United States around the fourth or fifth time frame, where we've got, it's coming from the Northwest, so it'll penetrate the Northwest to the central part, and eventually to the Southeast and the Eastern part of the United States. And if we take it out to the GF, GFS uh, model, kind of shows the same thing, a little bit more bullish, but definite signs of a, uh, a cold blast coming a week from now, this time next week, as the pattern slowly starts to change. If we expand the view until the ninth, like I said, this is not just a quick hit. So it's actually gonna continue um, into the second week of February. So it should start to release more cold air into the United States. And some of these anomalies, you can see in the far right hand corner, you know, 10, 15 degrees below average, and these are mean temperatures, okay? So that, that'll that pour into the south, southeastern part of the United States and kind of get everybody in the action. I know a lot of you guys have been wondering, when is it actually gonna cold, when is it actually gonna get cold? Not only get cold, but actually stay cold. So um, we're not talking like Arctic deep freeze or anything. I mean, this is a, this is a, you know, we can take what we can get right now. Right now we're showing just some, some definitely colder air um, into the United States. And if we take it out to the 12th, again, kind of shows the same thing where it starts to really start to penetrate down in the United States, getting much of the Western part, central part, and eventually the Eastern part of the United States into, into the colder air. As the pattern of the overall pattern tends to slow down, you're gonna have these jet streams dipping much further south, but rather than a zonal flow, you'll have more of a meridional flow dipping much further south, picking up some of that Gulf moisture, like we were able to tap into in that system uh, yesterday or even today that dumped some of the snow uh, down, down in this part of the air, this, this part of the country. So we're gonna get more opportunities for that as we go into February. And like I said, typically in February, it's your, typically it's your snowiest month for the central part of the United States, for the eastern part of the United States, typically for the United States, it's pretty much the snowiest month out of the year. So we've got climatology on our side, and this is the latest uh, EPS guidance um, showing some, some snow amounts. Like again, I'll fine tune the system for tomorrow or coming up this weekend for the northeastern part of the United States, but it kind of gives you more overall feel. And this is this is the ensemble members of all of the European model gonna kind of give you some uh, some some snow amounts over the next uh, two weeks in that same time frame where it's going to be cold. And this is the latest uh, GFF, GFS guidance kind of shows the same thing. So we're getting congruency and consistency, at least in the model guidance. Now, I don't want to take this further than out than two weeks. But yes, the Euro weeklies, the CFS model, you know, so We'll take what we can get for right now between uh, now and the first two weeks of February, definitely start to look of a transition into a colder pattern into the United States and will allow more opportunities for uh, snow setups as the overall pattern slows down and it's able to dip into some of that Gulf moisture for longer periods of time. So um, I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. Uh, please uh, like this video and definitely uh, share your thoughts and your comments below and share with your friends on social media and please subscribe to my channel and definitely to catch me in the next video where I protect you before and after the storm.